principles of conflict uh, management appropriate to your role. Now, I'm going to describe to you what is meant by conflict. I've asked you, uh, is anybody here who understands what is meant by conflict? Anyone? Yes? Difference of? Opinion of. Okay, different opinion, yes? Uh, Clash, arguments. Clash arguments. Clash arguments. Nice one. Disagreement. Yes. A typical example of this, I like to describe with it. Yes? Emmanuel, mm. what color are you seeing there? White. What color is this? White. White? Um, If you come to this side, yeah, don't, be in the video. don't worry. If you come, you see things differently depending on our perspective, the way we look at it. You can see he's saying uh, white and he's saying black. When I change it, it's doing white and it's saying black. Yes? So this is what happened in most cases. So when you talk to people, when you communicate with people, yes, they sometimes have a different understanding of what you are saying. And this is dependent on, one, their values, their exposure, their education, their culture, yes, where they come from, and their understanding, and also their perspective of that situation. So many a times, Many a times, you have a serious difference between two or more opinions, principles, or interests. So, conflict management, therefore, is the practice of recognizing and dealing with such conflict in a rational, balanced, and effective way. Situation leading to conflicts. What can cause conflict? Some of the things that causes conflict are misunderstanding, poor communication, poor communication, lack of planning, unrealistic, unfair expectation, attitudes, frustration and stress. Substance and alcohol abuse. All these can lead to conflict. So, security staff needs to, most of times, as part of their role, they need to enforce rules. And a lot of people, depending on where they are coming from, they don't feel comfortable many a times, especially. When somebody comes to your venue and you're telling them our venue policy is anyone that comes to the venue needs to be searched. Some people don't like to be taught. Maybe because of their experience. Or they don't even understand the reason why you will ask for them to be searched. So, you will need to understand as security operatives how conflicts arise how to recognize conflict, how to deal with conflict, including early intervention. Prevention or preventing or reducing conflict in the workplace will go a long way and it will make your job very interesting. You can imagine if you go to any work today or you're in a particular shift, you're having an issue with your colleague. Tomorrow, another colleague, you're having an issue disagreement. Would you like to go to that place? The third day? It will affect your working life, isn't it? <clears throat> because, you you know, it gives you some psychological feelings that you're not comfortable with. Oh, if I go in there now, that, that Dr. K is going to give me stress. It's going to give me aggros. <coughs> right? So, you will not enjoy working in such an environment. Now, the health and safety at work 
1974 provides a definition of workplace violence, which defines workplace violence as any incident in which a person is abused, threatened, or assaulted in circumstances related to their work. It is vital, very important, that employers and employees understand the importance of policies, guidance, and procedures. These are put in place to help keep everyone safe at work. Section 2 of the Health and Safety at Work Act 1974 places a legal responsibility on employers to ensure, so far as is reasonably practicable, the health, safety, and welfare at work of his employees. Also, employers must provide a policy statement, risk assessment, procedure detailing what to do in conflict situations, procedure for checking and review safety precautions, appropriate training, a safe environment, safe working practices, support for concern about abuse and aggression, and support following violent incidents. Employees, including security operatives, also have responsibility under this legislation. Section 7 of the Act states that employee must take reasonable care of their own health and safety. And while you are doing this, you need to ensure that your act or omission does not adversely affect the health and safety of other people working with you. What does this mean? You have a responsibility under the Section 7 Health and Safety at Work, 1974, to take reasonable care of your own health and safety. But while you are doing that, you should not use that to affect the health and safety of other people. Employees must familiarize themselves with the organization policies and procedures set and promote for both staff and customers as to what behavior is and is not acceptable. Follow those policies and procedures. Be aware of what might trigger a risk situation. Be prepared to gather, share and discuss information on risk situation. Attend appropriate training. Use risk assessment system, plan with others what to do in risk situation, correctly report violence incidents in the workplace. How do you deal with workplace incidents or violence? You must report all incidents of violence in the workplace. <coughs> Appropriate reporting helps to pick up the trends or particular triggers for aggression in the workplace. Proper records may be required for insurance and or investigative purposes. Reporting procedure will be detailed in your organization policies and procedures. You remember I mentioned what is called assignment instruction. Do we remember that? Assign assignment instructions. Yes, this will also be detailed on your assignment instructions, what to do in situations like this. Using communication to manage conflict. The effective use of communication skills can reduce the chances of conflict arising in the first place, help you to deal with difficult situations when they occur, and help you to uh, avoid and diffuse conflict situation. Using communication. As a professional security operative, it is vital you always act in a positive way. You can do this by being approachable, positive and constructive, professional, calm, clear, polite, smart, helpful, fair and honest. The law is very clear 
relating the, to the role of employer and the employees. However, your customer may not be aware of these expectations as to their behavior. Companies should therefore consider displaying no tolerance to violence or more polite. We are here to help you. Please do not abuse our staff. Yes? That is the same thing you have in the world. Yes? It's part of the policy. Stages of escalation. We have different, uh, four different stages of escalation. And it is always a good practice to handle conflicts from the inception, to have an early intervention. It starts from frustration. Then it goes to anger, and it goes to aggression, and it goes to violence. If you are able to address the situation at the early stage of frustration, you will not graduate into anger. If you see a customer coming to you with frustration, yes, use your communication skill to de-escalate the situation. A typical example of this is, as a security operative, you're standing at the venue and a customer comes right to you. Maybe the customer wanted to use the restroom and the restroom is messed up. The customer sees you as part of the business. They see you as the face of the business. They don't want to know whether you're a security operative or you're the cleaner. Because they are frustrated, maybe the customer went out last night and had some, <coughs> you know, some food, which is now irritating the stomach. So he needs to go to the toilet frequently. Right? Now, he doesn't want to know who is responsible. He wants to go to the toilet and ease off. The customer gets to the toilet, he cannot do whatever he needed to do. Out of frustration, he's coming down to you. You, you're just standing there. Go and get this thing clean. Obviously, your duty is not to clean the toilet. But if you're able to manage the situation because the customer is frustrated, it will go a long way. Two ways to handle this. And two actions. And two results. The first one is to take responsibility. Apologize to the customer. I'm sorry the toilet is like that. I'll talk to the cleaners. They will go and clean it up. But in the meantime, you can go to the uh, level two. You'll see another toilet there. You can use it. Yes, the toilet will be happy because you have provided an alternative and you have spoken very well to the customer. Sometimes, when customer sees that they have behaved in you know, an unruly manner, they come back to you and apologize for their actions. The second option for an unprofessional security operative is, why are you talking to me that way? Did I tell you I'm a cleaner? Who are you telling me to go and clean it all? I am not a cleaner. What do you expect from the customer? The customer will go to the face of anger. anger. Oh, you're not a cleaner. What are you doing here? What are you doing here? Are you not working here? And from there, if not well managed, it goes to aggression. And from there, it goes to violence. So what we are saying in essence is, when you see a customer who is frustrated, try to de-escalate. Have an early intervention, yes, and prefer a solution to the concern. Any questions, please? Attitude and behavioral cycle. Your behavior is everything you do and everything you say.
The circle says, my attitude affects my behavior. My behavior affects your attitude, and your attitude affects your behavior, and it goes on like that. So if you want a good attitude from anyone, what do you give them first? You give them good behavior. And to have a good behavior, you need to have a good attitude. So, your attitude at all times, as a professional person, must come out to encourage customers to give you a good behavior in return. If you respect a customer, definitely they will respect you back. How to break a negative cycle? My attitudes affect my behavior. My behavior affects your attitude, and your attitude affects your behavior. So if you're going to get something good, give me something good, and you get the good in return. Any question? No. Yes? You can change this by pretending to be happy even when you are not. Whatever issues you have at home, once you get at home, when you get to work, make sure you don't allow that. Don't use that to treat your customers. Leave your problem at home. When you get to work, do the work the way you're being expected. Put a smiling face on everyone. And the customer will be happy to be back again. Never allow yourself to get angry. Once you lose your temper, you can no longer negotiate with customer or manage the situation positively. Customer will talk to you rudely. They will undermine your intelligence. They are going to abuse you, especially when you are telling them what the policy is and they are not in agreement with that. Somebody comes to your venue, for instance, Somebody comes to your venue, for instance, and you are telling them this is the policy. A good example of this is someone wearing a trainer to the venue. And your policy says you cannot wear a trainer to the venue. You cannot wear a trainer to the venue. Right? The, venue, the, the trainer costs 500 pounds, for instance. The customer is going to tell you, this trainer costs 500 pounds. You're telling me I cannot wear it to your club? Before you, because you have told them what the policy is, and they are not happy with that, they are going to abuse you. You should be ready to manage the abuse. If you say you're going to respond to every customer that abuses you, then you're going to have a very bad day at work ready to manage the abuse. You need to be assertive. You need to maintain a positive attitude. You must effectively manage a conflict. And one of the ways to do this is you must like your work. You must like the work you're doing. Any work you do and you don't like it, the best cannot come out of you. So even if you don't like it, you still have to put up a smiling face pretending you like what you're doing. But I bet you, if you don't like what you're doing, it's not a healthy thing. You won't like your job. And that is where you can put in your best. Be assertive. If the behavior of a customer is unacceptable, then the customer must be told an appropriate action will be taken. The customer must be in no doubt that the decision has been made and there is no further opportunity to negotiate. Remember, there is a big difference between 
assertiveness and aggressive behavior. What are the six situations that can lead to conflict? We have misunderstanding, poor communication, lack of planning, unrealistic, unfair expectation, attitude, and sometimes an alcohol use. What are the four stages of escalation in a conflict uh, situation? We have frustration, anger, aggression, and violence. violence. 